As Sony prepares to release a mid-gen refresh, Xbox says, hmm, that's not for us. It is fully expected that later this year, Sony is going to release a mid-gen refresh for the PlayStation 5. Maybe it's the PS5 Pro or Slim or something along those lines. It is fully expected that that is going to drop likely before the holiday shopping season. Which brings up the question, is Microsoft going to do the same thing? And well, now we know the answer because there's a little gaming event going on in Germany. You may have heard some things coming out of there. Uh, a lot of announcements, honestly, this week, candidly. But one thing that has happened is that Phil Spencer did an interview with Eurogamer where he talked a whole bunch of stuff from games and exclusivity and everything else and beyond. Well, I'm not going to read everything, and there will be a link down in the description to that conversation. He does talk about hardware, the Series S, and about the limitations and everything else. And I think it's worth diving into some of these because it really kind of indicates where his head is at and what we can expect from Microsoft, including price cuts, which is really interesting. So let's just dive into the details here. So on the mid-gen refresh, and this is Phil Spencer saying this, he says, I think we got our, we get ourselves into this world of like, should we do a mid-gen refresh? Because we think every game should be 4K 60 frames per second. And we're not seeing that right now. So clearly we need the mid-gen refresh. Meaning that not every game can sustain 4K 60 frames per second. So he's saying, shouldn't we do a refresh? As soon as you start doing mid-gen refreshes, you get a bunch of issues in front of developers on what platform should they target. And it starts to feel a lot more like PC. Which is clearly a good ecosystem. He's not dumping on PCs. And he says, that's healthy. But then I'm like, okay, well then what's the difference between a console and a PC? if we're in this mode of every two years a new GPU comes out or a CPU and there's a bunch of things, I mean, we're the Windows company. We know what it means to run on a platform that's more continuous and I will say open. I actually love that for console gaming. I love having Discord on our platform, which is something 10 years ago, Xbox would have been like, no way. So what's really interesting here is he clearly calls out, it's like, hey, we're not hitting 4K 60 frames per second on everything, even though that was kind of the promise that we were alluded to believe the Series X would do. And he's like, he's, he's just candidly acknowledging that, which is really honestly refreshing. And one of the things that Phil, like, you know, a lot of people, including myself, like about Phil Spencer. And he just points out that if everything is getting refreshed all the time, then what's really the difference between PC? Although I will point out here, one thing I think we can take away from this is that they learned a lot doing the Xbox One X because he says getting developers trying to help them decide which platform to target, that feels like he's just saying the lesson we learned by launching the One X last generation is that it creates a little bit of chaos for developers about where they put their efforts into the platform. And Microsoft already sort of has that issue with the Series X and S, and so you throw a third box in there, like in One X or an X Pro or something along those lines, and then you're going to run into the same issues that they had last gen. And so just a little interesting nugget that it looks like maybe they learned their lesson about doing these mid-range mid, uh, refreshes along the way. So moving on to price drops, because price drops have been an industry staple, right? One of the things we've just come to know is that over time, prices should drop. Although Phil Spencer kind of comes out and says, don't expect that again. I'm not going to read this entire thing, but he very clearly says in the first line of this response, he says, the prices aren't coming down. Quite literally, they are not coming down for Microsoft. And if prices aren't coming down for Microsoft, guess who else they're not coming down for? That would be the consumer. He says, you're not going to be able to start with a $500 console thinking it's going to get to 200 bucks. That won't happen because the core components you use, you're used to Moore's law shooting up and to the right, but your components, you can't buy them anymore as a hardware maker because nobody's making that kind of RAM or other components. It's not the way it used to be where you could take a spec and then ride it out over 10 years and ride that price point down. It's why you see console pricing relatively flat. Now, we have seen some sales and everything else on the Series S, so maybe it's not completely flat, but we have also seen the PlayStation 5 pricing and the Xbox Series X primarily abroad, and they blame 4X headwinds or currency uh, conversions for the price changes, but they have gone up overseas. And so it very clearly Phil is broadcasting. He's like, look guys, um, don't expect big price cuts to be happening throughout this generation because it very clearly sounds like they're having trouble just sticking to that $500 price point when he alludes to the fact that just finding hardware makers making these older products uh, is difficult. He actually went on and said in the interview that typically a console hardware spec is locked two to three years before release. So when you start to think about that, okay, well, they're not just building like 
current gen stuff we already know that they're at least a generation behind but they're realistically almost like two generations behind this is for both playstation 5 and for xbox and so finding a a device manufacturer who's pumping out ram continuously of that product is i can quite see challenging because i bet that microsoft like most companies probably buys them in batch right they're going to go say we need x amount of chips for a while and then there's probably downside downtime on that production line of like ram in specific uh terms here and that they might transition to something else and then there's no way to buy them again granted microsoft can still clearly buy the ram uh, that is not an issue because they're still generating boxes. However, the price points are probably just not dropping like they would expect. Now, one of the things Microsoft could do, but again, this is expensive, is right, they come out with a board revision. So just making things up here, instead of saying uh, we have last gen RAM, maybe they can get current gen RAM and then down spec it so that it meets the same requirements as last gen. I don't quite know the, the logistics around that. It sounds easy on paper, but I know that stuff never really plays out. But then you also have to reconfigure the board and you're looking at a pretty significant refresh to just the main board itself, the PCB, and that gets expensive over time. And how many times can you do that to where it just doesn't make sense? Also, if you're going through all that effort to keep the same price point of the console, did you really get anything for, for making that switch? So. Other, other things that I think are really worth pointing out is the Series S. Now, the Series S has been slogged through the mud recently because of a very specific title that came out that has done exceptionally well. Uh, ends in Gate 3. <laughs> I don't know why I won't say the name. Baldur Gate 3. Uh, kind of drug the S through the mud, right? They said, look, we're having issues and blah, blah, blah. And so people are like, Microsoft should drop the Series S. That is something that they should do. It was a mistake. And Phil Spencer says, mm, nope, we are definitely not going to be doing that. First off, logistically they couldn't but let's just read on on his his words he says on s specifically we designed the xbox with similarities to x in clear places where we're targeting different performance and we're taking feedback from devs including larian uh, i met with them today blah 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 and they're confident that they will make it work he says i don't see a world where we drop the s in terms of parity i don't think you've heard from us or larian that this is about parity i think that this is more the community talking about it there are features that ship on the X today that do not ship on the S, even from our, even for our own games like ray tracing that works on the S and not on the S in certain titles. So for an S customer, they spent roughly half of the X customer, and they understand they're not going to get games in the same way. That is, I think, really important to point out because first off, Microsoft logistically couldn't just drop the S. Like, let's just say they're like, screw it, we're not selling the S anymore. They still have to support it, right? Because people like I, my, myself, I have one, I have an S and an X. Clearly, they cannot just, just say, nope, we're not shipping games on the S anymore because they would have a ton of customers. They would take so much bad PR. They would get drugged so far through the mud that it would just, it would be a PR nightmare. So clearly, Microsoft is going to be sticking with it. And they're actually fairly confident, he says in a, a different response, that keeping the price point of the S is very targeted at new entrants. If people want coming in and they want the best of the best, they're not going to be buying the S. That is a known quantity. They will spend up more dollars for the X. And so Microsoft needs that entry level price point, which is probably where we're only see, going to see the price cuts. Because if, if we go by last year as an example, we saw um, the Series S actually get down to as low as $199 in certain flash sales, but we never saw the X really take a price cut. And Microsoft might just be sticking to its guns, as we have noted up here in the previous comments, um, that, hey, we're just going to keep the X at that price point, And that's just a price that's going to be when it comes to attracting new customers to the platform. We will do that purely with the S because maybe one day we can get them to jump up to the X and we'll recoup some of our potential loss. Assuming that is making the assumption that they're actually losing money on the S, which we do not fully know. But I think it's kind of implied uh, that Microsoft is not making money on this hardware, at least yet. And so maybe that is their strategy is only the S gets the price changes and everything else. So it's a really interesting interview and one that is worth reading because he goes into other things about titles and other things happening within the, the uh, Xbox ecosystem and how Microsoft thinks about hardware, especially like what is Gen 10 hardware, right? Is Gen 10 hardware the next generation? Like truly, like how do you define these hardware generations? And he actually goes on to kind of hypothesize. He's like, will we eventually get away from calling things Gen 10? And then he backtracks a little bit because it's like, hey, if Microsoft is only putting out one console, you know, per uh, generation, even though I consider the S and the X one, even though they're slightly different, then do you really have generations and other things? And so it's just something to pay attention to and seeing how he's thinking about these hardware generations. He also makes it clear, by the way, that Microsoft does not have intentions of moving away from hardware. Right now, there's a lot of speculation that says, look, if Xbox can't get it together, they're going to give up hardware and just become a publisher. I don't think 
that's always an, op an op option on the list of things that could happen. But Phil makes it pretty clear that they continue or plan to stay in the hardware business, at least at the time of this interview. So there should be a Gen 10 Xbox in the next couple of years. We don't know an exact timeline quite yet. So there you go. Uh, links down in the description to that interview. It's definitely worth reading. And as always, my friends, if you want to stay updated with everything happening in Xbox and beyond, make sure to keep it subscribed here because only BS on this channel is me.